Handling requests and drunk people can be the catalyst for a bad night when DJing. So in this video, right, I'm gonna give you tips and insights on how to squash the issues before they arise so you can have the space needed to do your thing. So here's what I'm gonna cover, right? I'm gonna give you ideas on how to handle requests, whether or not you should play the requests, right? And also how to be ready for the requests in the first place. So that means having the actual tracks ready. So firstly, right, I'll be honest, right, requests don't have to be a bad thing. In ways, they can give you ideas on what the track, sorry, on what the crowd wants to hear, which is honestly great, right? But, but what I found is, let's say I'm turning up to play an event and I'm going into my first song. This used to happen all the time, right? So that, that first song, I'd say the first five minutes is when you're kind of under pressure. So let's say I'm going to do the transition between me and the DJ before me. And what I found was, see, I always like doing that transition. And then once I'm a few songs in, I've, I've built momentum, I find. But it's that first changeover period that can be a bit tricky. And I've got to read the crowd, find a track that's going to fit with his one. And there's just a bit going on, right? But then, so what happens is, then I'm playing. And in that first five minutes of playing, people see me and then they're coming up to everyone to say hello. So not only am I having to deal with the transition, but I'm dealing with like, you know, a ton of requests coming through. And it just, and I don't want to be rude because these are my fans, I guess, right? And I, I just want to be polite. But at the same time, I'm like, oh my God, it's just, it was a bit too much. So what I found was, quite often to diffuse that, and let's say you've got a gig coming up and you're, you're nervous about it already, just take a, someone with you. So what I did was for my big shows, I'd always take my partner with me and what I'd get her to do is she would kind of deflect the request in a very polite way. So that means if anyone was to approach the box, she would kind of go over and see what they wanted and how she could help. Now, if they want a request, she'd take those requests for me. And if they wanted my personal attention, she explained, well, just I'm doing the transition, maybe come back in 10 minutes. Or she might even say, hey, listen, we're partying at the end. Let me know, let them know when we finish and tell them to come hang out, you know, or have a drink because it's important to be to kind to the people that are coming to support your events. See, that's the thing, I was running the events, so they were my events probably, so they're there, they're part of my extended community, my family. So I have to try and be polite, because without them there is no party, right? So you have to be kind, and as a DJ too, I'll be honest, how big you get as a DJ is gonna come down to your fan base, and if the people are coming up to the, your box, it's a great way to actually build your, your fans by, I guess, making those people feel significant. And you've got to do what you can to make them feel significant. And if that's even playing their requests too, that's a great way. And sometimes I used to remember people by the requests they used to make, like I knew their favorite songs. And if I could incorporate those songs into my playlist, then that's actually really cool. But another way too is, um, and that is, like this, I use this method a lot too, and that is because it can be hard. Say you're taking requests and people are yelling and it's just the music's really loud. So I used to always take a request book. Now, let's say it's not your event, you're just a DJ there though, you can take your own request book, no problem. Maybe even let everyone use it, it's a good idea. Then the promoters might think, oh, that DJ's got initiative, it's a great idea. So I used to take a book. And you used to say request at the top, right? We even had a clipboard with printouts and it was like requests on the top and then have a pen tied to the clipboard and have pens on hand as well. And when people come up and just pass them the clipboard, they see that and they could even write their requests or a little message to the DJ or whatever. And that means then if I ever get to a point, that handles that too. So it means I can keep focused, just pass them the request book. But then also, let's say I get to a point that I'm not sure what to play, right? And I'm just sort of reading the crowd a little bit, I can quickly look at the requests to get some ideas. And that's actually really, really helpful. Now, I think that's gonna diffuse. I think that's actually the answer with like, you know, how to handle taking requests. But I do wanna say one thing quickly, and that is sometimes people push the boundaries. And what I mean by that is sometimes people like, you, okay, let's put it this way. We're in a nightclub atmosphere. Sometimes alcohol is involved in a big way. And sometimes people are just, they're, they're trashed, right? And sometimes they get abusive. Like they come up and they're requesting stuff and they're just like, oh, where, where is it? You know, in every few minutes, where's my song? Where's my song? And if it gets to a point that it goes from the requester, the requester into a harasser, right? And it's throwing you off your game massively and it just, it's looking really bad. I know this doesn't sound great and I like, you know, but sometimes they're just so drunk, they're not probably bringing a good vibe to the party. I probably might actually quickly go get security and get them removed. Now that hasn't happened that often. It's the last thing I wanna do. But think about it, right? 
you have to, it's most important that the DJ is in a good frame of mind and being reading the crowd. And here's the thing, if someone's really throwing you off the game, that can really affect the party. So, you know, it doesn't happen often, but if someone, if it's getting too much, you know, you can I speak to the person, you could speak to them firmly, but the thing is, it might be a point that they just, there's no logic. It's like, they're just that wasted they're being, you know. And so it's just like, you might have to get them removed. Now, another thing to say, when people come up and they're requesting, what I found, it's just based on personal experience, I'd be mindful and careful of saying, I don't have it, okay? Because here's the thing, right? What I found every single time, let's say someone comes up and it sounds like the obvious reply if you want to get rid of them and you go, nah, mate, sorry, I don't have it. And try it for yourself and see what happens. But I find what they come back then, they say, okay, well, what do you have? And it seems to open up a dialogue. Now, let's say, right, that's why sometimes the request pad is good. But if people then persist on talking to you, and let's say you're doing, you know, you've got these fast transitions, you put together a really kind of cool set where, you know, you've got to keep focus the whole time. And now someone's going, okay, what do you have? And sometimes then those people, when I said I don't have it, they, they take that as an invitation to come into the DJ box. And what they do, they come in, they go, okay, well, what do you got, man? Show us your library. And you're like, and you don't want to be rude, but at the same time, you're trying to keep focus. So that all came from the words, you know, um, yeah, I don't have it. So then I remember, see, here's, I'll say it from two sides here. I remember when I was younger, I approached someone as well, and maybe they had experienced the same thing. So I approached this guy for a quest, and he's like, yeah, man, sure, but he never played it. And that upsets the crowd as well, right? So I don't know, you want to kind of be non-committal, I think. You want to kind of be vague. And they, they, let's assume you don't want the request that is, or you're just staying focused and you've got your pre-plan set and you don't plan to take it. So and, and the best way is that they write on the request pad, but they insist on speaking to you. You could be like, oh man, that's it. make them feel significant. Be like, yep, that's a great request. As soon as I get a chance, I'll see if I've got it. If not, I think the next DJ might. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. You know what I mean? And that means then you're acknowledging them, you're not dismissing them. You know what I mean? Giving them a little bit of time and maybe just explaining, honestly, man, I, you know, maybe you could say if you're new, new, I'm a bit of a new DJ as well. I'm just, you know, trying to focus. I'll see if I've got it. But if not, maybe the next DJ does. I think that's a good line. Okay. But that is all assuming that you don't actually want the request. And I'll be honest, sometimes the request can actually be really helpful, like I mentioned before, especially if you need ideas. And sometimes even on top of that, you might be thinking about a track and you're not sure. This is if you're reading the crowd and all of a sudden someone comes up and requests that same track. That's that's 100% a sign that that track must be played, right? And basically then I'd probably actually maybe mention something to that person. Like, oh, well, I was just thinking about that and make a connection. Because the more connections you make, the bigger you, you build your fans. And then hopefully people feel significant. And then when you're the DJ, see what happens is you're the DJ, you're being kind to people and people are coming up. And if you're acknowledging them, then they're like, oh, wow, I know the DJ and you build your fans base that way and that's actually really important when playing live being kind to people being like oh wow people loved working with you and if you're doing weddings and that kind of stuff then a good event like that if you're a friendly dj that's really on point with the music you're playing people's requests and you're basically good at what you do word of mouth spreads and from one good show then i've done that you do one show then all their friends use you everyone uses you and that just branches out and you can get a lot of work so you definitely want to be open to requests but at the same time be careful because Sometimes people with requests, they've got no idea about like what should be played at what time or dance floor dynamics. And sometimes people come up and request something and they're being quite persistent. And let's say you don't have a good feeling about it. Well, I would 100% not play it. You've got to follow your intuition because if you come on and play a song that's not works, then all of a sudden it could clear your floor. But then the person that requests it is nowhere to be seen either. You know what I mean? So you have to be careful of that. So, you know, follow your intuition as best you can and try and, and if songs come and they sound like good ideas, then 100% play them. But again, you don't have to play the, the songs. But um, okay, but that leads me to my last point and that really is, so how do you actually prepare for a quest now? And that means having the actual song. So let's say you are doing functions like, okay, I'd love the gear where I use USBs. If I was playing in clubs, I'm using USBs, but the chances are when I'm playing in clubs, I'm probably on a lineup with other DJs. So, but when you're actually playing weddings and private parties or cafes and stuff, whatever, you could be playing five hours. And I'll be honest, I think it's easier to actually be playing big, long sets with a computer as it's much easier to search tracks on your computer. And you've probably got your whole music library there and I can just type in the songs I'm searching for. So if you're playing with your computer, that's the advantages of a computer, I guess. 
there's a very good chance that you know you're going to have a lot more music on your computer than you're going to have on your USB. But let's say then you are turning up to play at an event. Well, I would always over prepare and I'd have as much music on the USB as I can. And let's say you were preparing for a quest and you knew that you're playing a tech house and other something, maybe you could put that tech house genre folder on there, just all your tech house tracks. Then you've got the set you're working on, maybe some past sets that you've had in the past just as a backup and stuff like that. But yeah, I probably would kind of, the more songs you've got, the more prepared you are the better you're gonna be. And I, I've done a video on that. I think I did that last week. It's about you know getting out of sticky situations. And I think I've got a video coming up as well where it's like on categorizing your music and just like having, how, how we sort, mu how I sort music into playlists and what playlists I would take to a club event. Now, people often see requests as this really bad thing, right? Like, is that me and where they're pushing that person away? I'll put it up better. But in many ways, right, it can give you ideas on what people on your floor want. And basically, it's a good way to connect with your audience and find common ground between them. And also, right, just here we go. If you're single or open to meeting someone, you're going to find being a DJ brings loads of opportunities to hook up, right? And you may often receive, ad receive advances with people coming up to the DJ box and flirting with you which in which case maybe you could go out of your way to play their tracks if you wanted to create a connection with them right but uh, see here's the thing i just just quick attention on that i remember my partner right i've been with her for the last 12 years now but i met her at one of my club events but she didn't come to me right and approach me but i i approached her i saw her she made an impression on me and i asked her you know what she wanted to hear right and then from that single request, I could gauge the kind of music that she wanted to hear and I could craft something based on her style. But at the same time, you do have to be careful not to go on a big tangent. You have to always stay true to the vibe of the events that you're playing. So it can't be that influence. You know, there's a goal for the event, but then it's playing to the crowd and finding that balance. At the end of the day, right, the DJ is the center of the party. And if you are doing a great job and you're 100% in sync with your crowd, you may find people coming up and high-fiving you and instead of requesting tracks, they applaud you for your track selection. And trust me, there's no better feeling than the energy at parties. And when you're truly in sync with your crowd, playing all the right tracks at the right moment, right? It, it honestly feels like a spiritual experience. So it's, it's very, it's like it's hugely elevating on so many levels. And I personally feel that's one of the big motivating factors for a ton of DJs, that feeling that comes with it, like a successful show. Now, here's the thing. Do you guys have your own experiences? I'd love to hear about them. So post them if you want. But anyway, long story short, I'd be open to requests, but personally, if you are concerned about them, take a notebook with requests written at the top, and when someone approaches the DJ box, smile at them, pass them the pad, and you know, if they want to talk to you in person, and you can, you know, you can let them know that you're super busy and you're happy to talk afterwards, or if you're like me, you could even have a friend there to assist you, you know, just to basically so you can keep your focus on what you need to do, which is probably what I would do if I felt at all nervous about the show, or let's say you had limited experience, just take someone with you that can kind of help, like be the person between you and the crowd. Anyway, I hope that's been super helpful. If you have a method that you use to handle requests and drunk people in clubs or a story or something, I'd love to hear about it, right? And, um, you know, can't wait to read your comments below. So anyway, thanks for watching.